Hi everybody, it's Veronica from designaholicstudio.com. I'm back with another Christmas project from Christmas in August. I am really excited to begin today's video with some great news. We at Designaholic Studio are launching our craft kits and they are now available. Our first three kits will be gorgeous Christmas ornaments. I have already done two of them for you. I've done them right here and I wanted you to see them and I'll be working on a third for you as I do this video. But I'm going to show these to you up close and keep them in view. This one is called On My Way Home and as you can see Santa has an empty bag. And I, as you can't see he's all full of glitter and sparkle and he's very happy to be going back to the North Pole. The second one in this series is just called Poinsettia and it again has got glitter and sparkle. Now the sparkle on this one is green to match the holly and this one also has some gemstones on it just to pop out the centers a little bit. We have been working very hard to create these beautiful heirloom ornament kits for you. Absolutely everything that you would need to make one ornament is available in each kit. And we've included detail instructions so that you don't get confused. This is just the beginning though. Look forward to future kits that will suit every single taste and decor style. We're very excited about this. People were asking us earlier on if we did kits and now we are and it's a wonderful, wonderful thing because if you um, are just a beginner and you don't have everything you need, absolutely everything is available for you to do this and you can buy the kit as a gift for somebody for Christmas. It's a terrific little gift. Anyway, I am going to start on this particular ornament. There you can see it. It's got nothing on it. And I'm going to do this for you today so you can see how it's done as well as read it when you have your own ornament kit. Now, as usual, the very first thing I did, and I prepped this ahead, was to paint it white. Because and I, I've said many, many times, um, or anything that has a napkin over it or a pocket tissue needs to be painted white underneath even rice paper it does a better job if it's white and I used Stamperia's Allegro um, titanium white paint I'm going to flatten that out a bit I keep getting confused and I don't want you to not be able to see this I up until this point had uh, up until recently actually had not ever used this paint before and I have to tell you that I absolutely love it. It's creamy and smooth and it's got fabulous coverage so I really like it and I use it a lot now. So that's done that part of it. This is what I used to do Oh, what I am going to use. Sorry, not what I used. I haven't done it yet. This is what I'm going to use. This is a pocket tissue and it is four ply. So you have to take off a number of layers before you get started. I'm going to do this for you. Um, this is also included in your kit. You get two images just in case you make a boo-boo. Okay, I have... Oh, you're not going to believe this. I've actually cut this out. Now can you see these edges? They're very sharp and those edges are difficult to blend into your background when you use scissors. Why I did that was because I wanted to separate it from the pocket tissue in the right size for my ornament. However, it's a little bit too big. I did that on purpose because when I put it down here, as you can see, I'm going to sand off the edges. So it didn't matter whether I ripped it around or cut it, and cutting it was faster. What I did do, however, was I did rip this tiny little bit right here. Oops, it's on a slant. I ripped this tiny little bit right here at the top so that it would fit around this piece here. Oh, off, almost off. There, it will fit right around there. 
without having too much napkin up on the hook. Okay, we're ready to go. And I'm just going to leave those there so you can look at them and think about how lovely they are. See them and think, oh, I would love to do one of those. Okay, what I'm going to do next, of course, is separate the layers. And as I said, this napkin is a four... It's a four um, ply, um, it's not a napkin, sorry. Pocket tissue is four ply. You separate your plies just like this. There's one. And you put that aside. And I think, oh, there we go. There's two. Off we go, because we want the napkin to show through, to show nicely. We don't want it lifting up at the very end. And there's the third layer that we're taking off. And sometimes this is a little more difficult than others. This is why I don't generally do this on the video, but thought today you might like to see that since it's four ply. And I took off the last layer. And you can see that once you're ready to use this piece, it's quite trans uh, translucent. It's transparent. You can see through it. It doesn't look like there's any white whatsoever on the background. All right, now, um, today I am going to use, instead of the Stamperia Mixed Media Glue, I'm going to use Mod Podge. And I'm doing that because, like I said, Mod Podge does a fantastic job too. I'm doing it because in your kit, you will get an entire two ounce bottle of Mod Podge and you can use this for many things after you've finished making your ornament. You might even want to make some more ornaments. Anyway, I'm going to put some of this. First of all, I think I'm going to decide exactly where I want this. Now, this one is called Santa and His Friends. Or Santa and Friends, I can't remember exactly. And I'm going to, I'm laying it out pretty much where I want it. Now, there is a little doggy right down in this corner. He looks like a Jack Russell Terrier. And for all of us dog lovers, I didn't want him to disappear. So I was very I'm very careful about where I'm laying this down. Oh, I forgot something. There we go again. I always forget something. There is a section of the napkin that needs to be torn away because I want to put in some blue paint. And that is a process that I have not shown you before. So I'm just going to rip this in this area, take this over here, go down a little bit, go around the little birdie, I want the birdie there, go down around here. Um, not too concerned with the owl because he's in the sky and I want to do some painting in there. So I would have been painting over the top of him anyway. So I just took him off. There we go. Now you can see that it's it's uh, torn nicely. That is going to show. So I wanted to tear it rather than cut it. And I'm going to look to see exactly where I want it on the ornament. And more uh, likely I will be a little more careful with this after I put the, the Mod Podge on. There we go. We've got the little birdie, and we've got um, the dog, and the deer, and the bunnies, and the little cat, and even a little bit of the squirrel. He's got a lot of friends with him, Santa. Okay, now that's ready to go. I'm going to put some of my uh, Mod Podge at. This is brand new, so I just have to make sure there's no um, piece of paper in there stopping it from coming out. I'm putting it onto a piece of um, palette paper, <coughs> which I use a lot of the time to put paint on and to put glitter on and to put Mod Podge on. And I'm going to take my, um, this is also included, this uh, sponge brush is for base coating, so you can paint your whole, you can paint your whole ornament with it. I'm going to use it today to put the Mod Podge on. And here we go. I'm just going to put the Mod Podge on the whole thing. Just makes it easier. And I'm, I've got too much here, I think. 
so I will be putting some back into the jar. This is very um, this is very handy because because there you can hold the top of it and you don't get your fingers all in it. There we go. There's the Mod Podge on there. Just put that brush down. I'm going to very carefully put this down. You know, sometimes I'm silly. I forget how I do things. Normally I would have just done a little bit of this at a time. But I didn't do it that way. I'm just going to press it down. And I'm going to rip this a bit because I went over too far. There we go. Now I'm going to take my um, I'm going to take my sponge brush and I'm going to go over the top. At the moment, except for that looks like a one little crease there which was in the pocket tissue to begin with. I'm just putting down the Mod Podge over the top to keep it down. And again, I've said many times, if you get a few wrinkles, um, it's not really a big issue. I don't mind them at all. Kind of adds a little bit of texture and interest. Um, you should try the water technique if you don't want any wrinkles at all that I demonstrated in another video. And I did it on top of a photo clip. And I just showed you, I didn't do the whole thing, I just did the video to show you how to put it on with water. And I got absolutely no creases and it was fabulous. So if you want to try that and you want to see how to do it, check out that other video. Okay, that is done. I am going to um, make sure, just pop, what I do too, is if I see a crease or a bubble that I don't really want, they're bubbles more so than creases, I just plop them down with the brush and it works that takes them down it takes the air out of them anyway I'm pretty sure that's all I need to do here and the last thing I'm going to do before I allow this to dry is take off all of this excess with my sandpaper so I'm going to take my little piece of sandpaper that I always keep handy and I am going to just use a top to bottom stroke and this will take off any excess that is on the edge and the reason why you should do it while the Mod Podge is still wet is because if it dries you see that around the edge it's going to stick there now maybe that's what you want and if it is you leave it there but um, I want to paint that so I'm getting rid of it Oh, it's all coming. There, it's done. Just this little section right here. And now that's done. Now that has to dry. I can't do anything else on here because it's a small surface. I can't do anything else on here until that is dry. So I'm going to pause just for a few minutes and let that dry and then I'm going to go on with this. It's already looking so cute. I'll be back in one minute. Hi everybody, I'm back. And we're dry enough now to be able to go on to the next steps. I'm going to now use a little um, piece of equipment called a spouncer. And this is a round sponge on the end of a stick. And what this does is blend in these edges. You can see now we've got dark blue edges up against the white. That doesn't look very nice. So we're going to use the spouncer and some dark blue paint and a little bit of white paint to blend in those edges and make some sky. So what you do is you put your spouncer into your dark blue I may have to put some of this back. It looks like I have far too much for this little space. 
and you spounce it around on your paper or if you're using um, if you're using something else you spounce it around on whatever surface you're using and this is what you do you go right up to your edges and you blend in oh I'm down too far and you blend in those space those edges of the napkin or the pocket tissue into the ornament you can even go up a little bit onto that paper if you like if it helps to blend it and I'm going to go a little bit into the white and spounce around on that just to add a little bit of dimension and you know me I want it to be a little bit more interesting and this just helps to create some interest in that sky now this is a technique that I have not shown you before. It's easy, fun, and I'm going to do the whole back with it, so I will show you how to do that in a larger space. And you just keep going until you've got your background covered up. Now I think I want it a little bit darker around those outside edges, so you put a little bit more blue paint on. And you go back where the white paint was and then you go back into any area that's not done yet and because I'm working with this kind of far away from me and on an angle so that you can see it I'm having a little trouble seeing it myself so I may have to tilt it a bit just to make sure that I've got colors in the right place okay I do have to tilt it a little bit so I can see what I'm doing and I do want a little bit more of the dark blue. You will get the paint in your kit as well. You don't have to worry. You're not looking for it and saying, oh, where am I going to get that paint? It comes in the kit along with white paint. Now, I'm not crazy about the fact that it went down there. So I've got my handy little um, Q-tip, which I, am, I wet it. And I'm just going to try and get it off here a little bit back it up a titch and just take it a bit off that white it doesn't have to totally come off because that is the snowy part and what I might do if I can't get that totally off or enough to my um, to where I like it is I'm just going to go over that with a little bit of white paint after the fact okay now I still want a little bit of dark blue around this edge up here because if you look at the um, at the pocket tissue if you look at it closely you can see that there is black in and around the trees or a very dark color so this is working well as dark blue and it uh, the uh, trees do cast a shadow so rather than having to go around shading this after, I will just put in some darker blue with the spouncer wherever I think I want it around the outside edge. Oh, that sky looks fabulous. I'm going to leave it a little bit lighter right there. I really like that. Okay, I think I might bring this down a bit. I'm going right over the tissue. Or, yes, the pocket tissue. There, I went right over it. And I think I might like it even a little bit darker down there in that very uh, recessed area. So, and blend it in so that you don't have any edges. There we go. It's done. Now, I'm going to take that same pants bouncer and I'm going to go all around the outside edge. This saves having to paint it. It's very easy to do. Now, if I'm finding that it is going onto the, the tissue over here, I'm going to stop doing this, and I may paint it. But so far, so good. It hasn't happened. Just be careful. Don't let too much of, this, of the sponge go over onto the pattern side. You can just keep it... Oh, there, there that's working, using the, this edge. You know, half the time I can't remember what I've done from one thing to the next. So I may have painted these edges the last in the last two that I did. But this is easy because you've already got the paint on the on the sponge. 
you're already using a sponge, why dirty up another brush? That got a little bit there, so just wipe it off. It comes off easily enough as long as it's not dry. When acrylic paint gets dry, you're kind of done for. It doesn't come off. So if you've got something somewhere that you don't want it, you better take it off before it dries. There we go. It's almost finished. That was easy enough. So that's the outside edge done. Now I'm going to turn it over. Like I said, it's so handy to have this little handle. And I'm going to spounce the color on the back. And you don't have to be careful with this. You just want some nice coverage. Now you can have you can leave this all dark blue if you like or you can add some white like you did on the other side and I am going to add some white because I just like the way it looks and the more blending you do the nicer it is so keep going till you've got it blended and this is just a plaything, ladies and gents. You play with this until you get it the way you like it. This is like being in kindergarten, just slopping stuff everywhere. I know those little guys don't know they're just slopping, but and they are not trying to just slop. We're just slopping because we know and we know we're doing it because it's fun. There, we're almost done this, and I'm really liking the way this looks. Now, you could use a bare um, spouncer to do this, but this is the one you're going to get in your kit. You might get a slightly larger one, I'm not sure, but you will get a spouncer for sure. That's, that's a for sure. And you just um, continue until you're done your back. Now, I could just stop here, but since I'm almost finished, I think I'm going to finish it because it only takes a minute and you can just enjoy seeing how it's going to turn out. Look at that! It's pretty nice! I like it! I hope you can see. Like I said, I often take my work off of the screen because I need to work with it close to me and then you can't see it. So I'm doing the best I can to make sure you see everything I do. And I'm just about ready to leave it there. As long as it's all smoothly blending in. Oh my gosh, that looks so nice. You could do this on a canvas if you wanted to do some kind of space thing. Looks beautiful. And there I did end up using all of that dark color that was down there. I didn't have to put any back in the bottle. It's a dark blue. Now, this little thing that I have here is mine. This one is one that I have used a gazillion times. And as long as you put it into some water after you're finished using it, and then you um, clean it out after when you're done, you can use it and use it and use it and use it. There. So. Don't think that it's just for one use. You can reuse this little guy a million times. There we go. That's the back. All done. And I'm going to put this, like I said, into my trusty little jar, baby jar of water, so that it doesn't get all hard in there. And I'm just going to let it sit until I'm ready to wash that out. Okay, this is going to, again, take a minute to dry. So I will pause. Well, maybe I don't need to. Maybe I don't need to. If I'm careful, and if I just hold the edges, I might be able to do the next thing I want to do. Okay, I'm taking the pointed brush that I would normally, um, that you would normally use for shading. And because we use the spouncer, we don't need to really do much of that. And I'm just going to add some of it to the white snow that's on these trees just to give them a little dimension. And this is just a tapping motion, just tapping in some color. So you brighten up the snow that's kind of gotten a little bit dulled. Or maybe it was dulled to start with, but this just brightens it up a bit.
and you don't have to put it everywhere you just put it where you want it keeping in mind and I've said this many times before any kind of work like this is so personal you can do whatever you like with it artists don't um, look at something and say oh it has to be exactly like that they do whatever they like makes them happy makes you happy because now you've got a creation that's all your own one of a kind here we go now the other thing that I'm going to do is um, when you have when you have this brush and you wet it you can make if you twist it you can make a nice point so I'm going to take that point and I'm going to um, add some white to this wall there is white there but it sort of fades into the background so I'm going to just brighten it up a bit and it's on a number of the uh, kind of is the divider between the bricks I guess but it's it looks nice when you brighten it so I'm just putting a little bit of white paint on there and it brightened it up just a bit remember to keep your hand off the back but the sides are dry so that's why it's working now I'm also going to take this brush and on Santa's hat I'm going to dab some little dots of white paint and I've got way too much white paint here for sure so I'm just going to dab in some dots this again makes his hat it uh, makes his um, the fur on his hat look a little more real there we go I'm going to do the same thing on his cuffs just plop these little dots onto his cuffs Now I'm not going to do it on his beard because his beard doesn't look like this and you're not trying to make it look like fur I am going to do it over here onto his other cuff and I'm going to do it down the fur that's on his jacket now you don't have to do the whole thing you don't want to go into where it's already shaded but if it's very white on the um, pocket tissue then don't feel that you can't brighten it up a little bit because you can and you can leave the shading in there and you want this to look like fur so this helps to make it look like that okay now I notice he's still he's got some fur on the top of his boots so I think I'm gonna brighten that up a little bit and just as I said I'm just using little dots with the tip with the tip of my um, paintbrush that's why these paintbrushes are, are so good because you can use them for a number of different things and this one is one of the things you can use them for there put a little bit of fur there now am I going to do anything I might whiten up this snow a bit right here you see this snow that's on top of the little table I'm going to brighten that up a little bit just with some white paint and this again up to you you didn't you don't have to do this but it does add something when you do okay now there's white on the trees that makes makes it look like the snow is a little bit heavier on here like it's ready to fall right onto the little cat's head and if you find you need to go back and do it again then that's what you should do it might um, flatten a bit when you're um, after first coat there we go I think that's good not gonna add too much more maybe a little bit more under the cat and I am gonna have to scrape that white paint off of there there's way too much and I don't want to waste it so I am gonna put it back in the jar now be careful when you put paint back in a jar that you don't include any other colors in there because then it'll come out looking blue or green or whatever instead of being white and I think I need to uh, do this over here a little bit more 
I did do this on I'm on my way home. I used some of this white paint on the evergreen trees and I did some on I did the dots, the little dots onto Santa's uh, the end of his oh I forgot that thank goodness I was mentioning that because I forgot to put the little dots onto the pom-pom here a little harder to work on this one because he's smaller than the other one I did but there we go now I think oh there's one more little bit of snow up here now if I've done all the snow I can't forget to do this a little bit there there we go. Okay, that's done. Um, next step. I think this is dry. I can put it down. Clean my brush in the water. Okay, next step. Oh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. This has to be uh, whitened up. I am going to put glitter on here, but before I do that, I think it needs to be whitened up. And that's what I'm doing right now. Just taking some of this white paint going over this again because it uh, looked like it got a little bit of blue paint on it and some white, maybe not any white. I'm going inside those little holes too. I don't want them to look dark. I want them to look white in there. So I'm going in there. These are all things that will be in your instructions. And if you feel that you need a little bit of support then you just watch the video. You can watch the video as you're working. And then you'll get it just perfect. Because even without, um, with no direction, and having done two of these previously to this one, I still was forgetting to do little tiny things. Because this is all it is, is there's little tiny things that you forget. That's interesting. Huh. Oh, that must be the tree. Anyway, I'm going to go down there. You notice how I'm rounding out those little end those little ends? That's because the cap of an ornament is often rounded on those little ends. So that's what I'm going to do. And round it out a little bit and round it out on that edge as well. And then I'm going to go in here because it looks like it's a little bit dark in there. I don't want it to be dark. I am also going to do the edges. Because those look like they got some blue on them. And this is why you don't have to be too careful when you're working. Because if you do get a color somewhere that you don't want it, you can just paint over it. And here we go. Oh, you can see the blue definitely there. See how much blue? Now it's dry so I can hold it a little more easily. Yeah, you're even going to get this brush. You're even going to get one of these brushes in your kit. So you don't need to have anything. Everything will be available in there. And I'm just going to quickly do the back as well while I'm working because it's uh, silly to have to go back and do it again afterwards when I've got the white paint right here handy and there we go I think that's it good it's done now again don't forget clean out your brush immediately don't leave it with wet paint in it it will dry harden and your brush will be um, ruined and you don't want that because again these brushes can be used multiple times afterwards there we go now that is still a little tiny bit wet on the back I can't really lie it down so what am I going to do next I am going to take a little bit I'm not going to let it uh, lie it down so I am going to take some of this this is Galaxy Glitter and this one is called Clear Ice Comet and it is an amazing glitter, heavily loaded glitter acrylic that 
leaves fabulous glitter on places and it's big enough so that you can see it. It's kind of all different sizes and shapes. I'm going to put a little bit of that out. Here we go. And I'm going to use that on Santa's hat. And I'm just dabbing this on because I do want to maintain that little bit of um, bumpiness there. And on his pom-pom. And on his uh, the front of his jacket, on the fur. Now again, you probably cannot see this glitter and I am sorry for that because it adds so much to the piece. But you will see it when you're doing it yourself. And down here. And on his boots. Here on his boots, wherever those little dots are. And on his, oh, I think I've got it all. His boots, his um, cuff, the front of his jacket, here's his other cuff. And on his hat, you would not believe how much cuter this looks with all that glitter there. And you know what? You know where I did the snow here? right here around the cat. I think I'm going to add some glitter there to separate it from the other snow that's behind it. And maybe it's just the way the light is shining on this that makes the glitter really show on that snow. And it doesn't matter if you're kind of globbing this on. It um, that works just as well. Actually, if you paint it on like regular paint, you tend to lose some of the glitter. So I would just glob it on. Okay, now this is dry. I'm also going to put some of this onto the um, the clip or the hanger. Because it's Christmas and we want glitter and shiny and well, we don't all want that. So I will tell you, I suppose I shouldn't because it comes as a nice surprise later, but I will tell you there will be a set of ornaments for all you ladies and gents who decorate in a very country style. And uh, they're on their way, but they're not quite ready yet for me to show you. So uh, you'll see them on the site as soon as they're available and they'll also come in kits and there's going to be a set of snowmen themed kits as well so look forward to all those things they are fabulous you'll have a lot of fun or like I said you can give them as gifts um, there we go. I'm going to put that on there and I'm going to let that dry. I'm also going to put it on the back while I've got this here and I don't, it, I don't want it to dry out and waste. So I'm just going to put it on the back of the hanger. Now this hanger is not finished. One coat is not quite enough. So I'm just going to put that one coat on there and just leave that for a minute. I can't put it down because it's still wet and it's going to take a minute to dry. So what if I take this brush that's still a little wet with glitter because I don't want this to just totally distract from the rest of the Santa and his little friends. So I'm just going to paint some of this little bit of leftover glitter into the sky. There we go. I'm going to paint it in. And it's just about enough to do what I need to do here. I don't want it to be in your face, glittery. I just want it nice and, um, there we go. There's enough in there that you can see it. Well, I can see it. 
I don't know if you can see it. Oh, you know what? I think you can. I think you can see the glitter in there in the sky. And that's from the Galaxy Glitter, which you will also get in your kit. You see it? I can see it. So you must be able to see it. That's fantastic. Okay, now that has to dry a little bit too. Although, got another idea before I get rid of this. Um, Got to put my paintbrush in my mouth for a sec. Put up some more glitter. Turn my ornament over. And I'm going to put some of this glitter on the back. There you go. Can you see it? Yes, you can. And that's the back. And you will, like I said, you will get the, uh, the galaxy glitter in your kit. Now that has to dry. And I can see, when I lift it up, I can see spaces that may look a little dull afterwards. But, okay. That has to dry. The hanger has to dry. The sky has to dry. So I am going to pause for another second and come back shortly. Hi, I'm back again. While I was gone, I put a second coat of Galaxy Glitter onto the clip, front and back. Whoops. There we go. Front and back. Just to glitter it up again. I might even do a third coat. Right now it's still pretty wet though, so I can't do anything else on there. And I decided that Santa needed to be sitting in the snow. Meaning, I think it should be snowing while Santa's sitting there. So if I take my brush, just with the tiniest little weeny bit of paint on the end, onto that point, and just touch it very, very lightly to the sky and to Santa's suit, because the snow would be on him as well, or at least on his suit. Even on the little cat, he needs some snow coming down on him. It is snowy and it's wintry and it's just so nice to add all these little details. These details are what make something beautiful. And a few little drops of snow on his hat. And I have to get some snow over here. And this is what, again, so nice about this brush. You can do so many things with it. And that point that it comes when you wet it and just twist it a little bit works beautifully to do little things like this. And if I'm correct, this is it, everybody. Once you've done this, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. I'm not going to do it on the back. Uh, just on the front. Once you've done this, your ornament is finished. And you can go on. I'm not going to do the rest. You can tell what I was doing. But I will put some snow on Santa's bag and onto um, our little doggy here. And maybe some onto the deer's back. And a little bit even onto the snow because that snow is faded into the background. But other than that, this ornament is absolutely gorgeous and done. And you don't have to do anything else. And everything is there in the kit. Now let me show you this little this guy again. I don't know, can you see the glitter on him? I really like this one. This is probably my favorite, but everybody has their own taste. And there's the poinsettia one more time with the green glitter that you would get in the kit. And here is Santa and friends all finished, just waiting to dry. Easy peasy. Okay, everyone. Well, I'll tell you what. I think it's time for me to wish you a fun crafting day. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. We've got all sorts of other things coming up. And I'll leave you with my mantra. Try it. You'll love it.